The Tale of Peter Rabbit by Beatrice Potter Once upon a time there were four little rabbits, and their names were Flopsy, Mopsy, Cottontail, and Peter. They lived with their mother in a sandbank underneath the root of a very big fir tree. Now, my dear, said old Mrs. Rabbit one morning, you may go into the fields or down the lane, but don't go in Mr. McGregor's garden. Your father had an accident there. He was put in a pie by Mrs. McGregor. Now run along and don't get into mischief. I am going out. Then old Mrs. Rabbit took a basket and her umbrella and went through the woods to the baker's. She bought a loaf of brown bread and five currant buns. Flopsy, Mopsy, and Cottontail, who were good little bunnies, went down the lane to gather blackberries. But Peter, who was very naughty, ran straight away to Mr. McGregor's garden and squeezed under the gate. First he ate some lettuces and some French beans, but then he ate some radishes. And feeling rather sick, he went to look for some parsley. But round the end of the cucumber frame, who should he meet? But Mr. McGregor! <laughs> Mr. McGregor was on his hands and knees planting young cabbages, but he jumped up and ran after Peter, waving a rag and calling, Thief! Peter was frightened. He rushed all over the garden where he'd forgotten the way to the gate. He lost one of his shoes among the cabbages and the other shoe amongst the potatoes. After losing them, he ran on four legs and went faster, so that I think he might have gotten away altogether, except that he had unfortunately run into a gooseberry net and got caught by the large buttons on his jacket. Peter gave himself up for lost and shed big tears, but his sobs were overheard by some friendly sparrows who flew to him in great excitement and implored him to exert himself. Mr. McGregor came with a sieve, which he intended to pop upon the top of Peter, but Peter wriggled out just in time, leaning his jacket behind and rushed to the tool shed, where he jumped into a can. It would have been a great thing to hide in if it had not had so much water. Mr. McGregor was sure that Peter was somewhere in the tool shed, perhaps under a flower pot. He began to turn them over carefully, looking under each one. Presently, Peter sneezed, Kachoo! and Mr. McGregor was after him in no time and tried to put his foot upon Peter, who jumped out of a window, upsetting three plants. The window was too small for Mr. McGregor, and he was tired of running after Peter. He went back to his work. Peter sat down to rest. He was out of breath and trembling with fright, and he had not the least idea which way to go. Also, he was very damp with sitting in that can. After a time, he began to wander about, going lippity-lippity, not very fast, and looking all around. He found a door in a wall, but it was locked, and there was no room for a fat little rabbit to squeeze beneath. An old mouse was running in and out over the stone doorstep, carrying peas and beans to her family in the wood. Peter asked her the way to the gate, but she had such a large pea in her mouth she couldn't answer. She shook her head at him, and Peter began to cry. Then he tried to find his way across the garden, but he became more and more puzzled. Presently, he came to a pond where Mr. McGregor filled his water cans. A white cat was staring at some goldfish. She sat very still, but now and then the tip of her tail twitched as if it were alive. Peter thought it best to go away without speaking to her. He'd heard about cats from his cousin, Benjamin Bunny. He went back toward the tool shed, but suddenly... Quite close to him, he heard the hoe of a hoe, scritch, scritch. Peter scurried underneath the bushes, but as nothing happened, he came out and climbed on a wheelbarrow and peeped over. The first thing he saw was Mr. McGregor hoeing onions. His back was toward Peter, but beyond him was the gate. Peter got down quietly from the wheelbarrow and ran as fast as he could, a straight behind the currant bushes. Mr. McGregor caught sight of him at the corner, but Peter didn't care. He slipped underneath the gate and was safe. At last in the woods, Mr. McGregor hung up the little jacket and shoes for a scarecrow to frighten the blackbirds. Peter never stopped running or looked behind him until he got home into the big fir tree. He was so tired that he flopped down on the nice soft sand on the floor of the rabbit hole and shut his eyes. His mother was busy cooking. She wondered what he'd done with his clothes. It was the second little jacket and pair of shoes that Peter had lost in a fortnight. 
I'm sorry to say that Peter was not very well during the evening. His mother put him to bed and made him some chamomile tea. She gave a dose of it to Peter. One tablespoonful to be taken at bedtime. But Flopsy, Mopsy, and Cottontail had bread and milk and blackberries for supper. The End